All right, so uh, today we're going to be talking about the difference between scotopic and photopic vision. And these things are really kind of confusing because they sound a lot alike, scotopic and photopic. Uh, but kind of to break down what this video is going to focus on is one, what is the difference between scotopic and photopic or rods and cones? Uh, what kinds of vision are they responsible for? And how does this lead into night vision? How can we see at night? We're gonna answer all these questions. Okay, so first, scotopic and photopic vision come from uh, different kinds of visual information that we get from two different kinds of photoreceptors. Photoreceptors are found in the back of the eye, in the in the retina. Um, and basically what these things do, what these photoreceptors do is they're going to take light and they're going to convert it into a neural impulse. In other words, they're going to turn it into an action potential. So, uh, and that's something that our brain can understand. So we have scotopic, which is going to be rods, and photopic, which is going to be cones. You've probably heard of rods and cones before. They're two different kinds of cells. And these kinds of cells are going to be responsible for handling different kinds of light. So let's, let's start out by talking about cones. Cones are going to be responsible for our photopic visual uh, system. And uh, what these cones do is basically they're going to be detecting color for us. So any kind of color that you see generally going to be responsible for processing by your cones. Um, we have three different kinds of cones. That's going to come in handy when we talk a little bit more about color perception. But these cones, uh, so they're going to be absorbing in this light, turning it into an action potential. And uh, most of these cones are going to be in the very center of our visual field. Most of these cones are going to be right there in the fovea. The fovea is uh, basically the very center of your visual field, the very center of your retina. So if you're reading something, where your eyes are, where your attention is, that is going to be your fovea. That's where most cones are. And so our color detection and our color perception is going to be best and it's going to be strongest right in the center of our visual field because that's where most of the cones are. So they are throughout the retina, they're all over the place, but they're located most strongly right there in the center. Um, one other thing, a couple other things that are important about photopic uh, vision is that photopic vision has very high spatial acuity. In other words, the resolution is very, very good. Uh, so we can detect very small details with our cones, with our photopic system. Because those cones are bunched up really close next to one another, uh, we're really good at getting individual details in the center of our visual field. One bad thing about that, though, is that our cones are not very sensitive. Um, in other words, it takes more light for, uh, for us to be able to perceive um, something in our visual field as a product of the cones. So it takes more light for, to activate our cones than it does our rods. So let's talk a little bit about the rods. The rods are going to be used in the scotopic uh, visual system. The scotopic visual system is basically going to see things in black and white. But not only black and white, because there's not that many rods in the center of your visual field, most of your scotopic vision is going to be around. It's going to be in your periphery. It's going to be outside of the fovea. And we have many more rods than we do cones. Because if you think about you know, the layout of the eye, the center of your eye only accounts for so much of your eye. It's, it's a very small part of it. So we have about 90 million uh, rods, where we have only about 4 or 5 million cones. So, uh, like I said, they're mostly on the outside, and you probably outside of your fovea, and you probably know that your vision is not best uh, on the edges of your visual field, right? Is in your periphery. You can kind of get the big broad picture, but you can't really get the details. And that's because rods don't, or at least our scotopic visual system does not have very good resolution. It doesn't have very good spatial acuity. Uh, so most things are blurry whenever they are viewed by the rods. However. Um, the rods kind of make up for that by being very sensitive. We talked about how the cones were not very sensitive to light. Rods are very sensitive to light. It takes only a little bit of light for us to be able to pick up on, uh, on, uh, on something in our visual field uh, because of our rods. So this leads us into a discussion about night vision. Because if you think about being sensitive to light, nowhere do we really notice that as much as at night, right? Whenever you're outside at night and it's really dark and uh, you're really good at, at detecting where the moon is, where the stars are, and any kind of oncoming lights um, because you're very sensitive to that. That's because night vision is mostly your rods. Uh, during that time, the cones, which are require a lot of light you know, to, to be activated, are not really used all that much. And so we're relying a lot on our rods. 
But the kind of funny thing about this is that night vision is not instant, right? Whenever you walk outside at night, it takes a little while for you to kind of start gaining uh, your ability to see at night. It usually takes about five minutes to, still, to start getting your bearings. And then it takes about 20 to 30 minutes in order for us to really fully adapt to night vision. The reason why this happens is because that normally during the day, our rods are so sensitive that light is actually degrading one of the proteins in your, or photo bleaching is another word that people use, is photo bleaching or degrading a protein in your eye called rhodopsin. This rhodopsin is gonna be used to kind of power the rod cells. So whenever there's too much light, it's gonna kind of degrade, it's gonna dissolve that protein. But after about 20 or 30 minutes, that protein is able to recombine. It's able to rebuild itself back up to help power the rods more, more efficiently. So the reason why whenever you walk outside and it's pitch black and you can't really see anything, that's because uh, the protein that powers the rod is still kind of rebuilding. It's still kind of getting back to normal. Other things that happen along with this is that your your pupil, you may notice that at night it expands. It lets, and the reason why it expands is that it's letting in more light. Whenever it's really, really bright outside, our pupils constrict, they get really small, that's to let in less light because our cones are, uh, are uh, not as sensitive, but our rods, it can still really hurt, which is part of the reason why whenever you walk outside uh, and it's dark and someone shines a light right in the middle of your eye, it kind of hurts. That's because two things are happening. All that uh, rhodopsin is being degraded, is being photo bleached, but also your pupils are going to constrict very, very quickly. So that's the, the big broad difference between scotopic and photopic visual systems. Um, yeah, so that's it.